What's up everyone, Darkblade here bringing you another Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at the Volus Adept. Although I have overlooked this character for some time, I feel ready to do a guide on him. Many may see the Volus Adept as a biotic god, but I think he is much more useful in a supporting role rather than an offensive one. Now like all my characters, I expect them for the harder difficulties in the game. With the Volus Adept, I put up to rank 3 in Stasis. Stasis is normally at its most effective when you put points up to rank 6 bubble, but I went for rank 3 just to allow some minor crowd control and the possible setup of biotic explosions. Next I max out biotic orbs, putting points into orb count over expose. Both of these are good options, but I prefer orb count as it means that it will decrease the cooldown timer even more whilst I have more orbs up. Great for when I'm spamming shield boost. Expose is good, but favours more offensive gameplay. Next I put points into recharge speed over damage. Again, as I'm going for a supporting role, I went for the recharge speed. Finally, I went for damage over impact radius. Both of these are good options, and now that I look back at it, I think I should have gone for impact radius to stagger more opponents and give myself some room when enemies are attacking me. But at the time of filming this, I went for damage. Next is Shield Boost. I maxed out Shield Boost, putting points into Protection over Duration. I did this because I would be spamming Shield Boost a fair amount, and this would mean that I would get little benefit out of Duration when compared to Protection. Next I went for Recharge Speed over Regeneration. Again this is because I would be spamming the ability. Also I felt that the Regeneration was not as useful when I could simply have a quicker cooldown on Shield Boost and restore mine and my allies shields rather than wait for it to restore on its own. Lastly I put points into Shields over Impact Radius. Both of these are good. As for the passive abilities these are down to personal preference. With Volus Training I put points up to rank 5, putting points into Shield Boost over Power Damage to make my Shield Boost stronger and make the Volus Adept a greater healer. Lastly, I put points into damage and capacity to help reduce the weight of my weapons. If you wanted, you could skip out stasis in favour for rank 6 weapon weight or weapon damage. Lastly, I maxed out fitness, putting points into health and shields, as melee with the Volus is more defence based than attack based. Also, with the Volus's low shields and low health, he will need all the health and shields he can get. As for weaponry, go with something you feel comfortable with. With this build, you can get away with using a weapon that doesn't give you the 200% cooldown bonus, but don't overweigh yourself too much. Your weaponry and biotic orbs is where your damage will come from on this character, so use gear to possibly increase these. Anyway, let's get into the heart of the episode and talk about the Volus Adept's moves and abilities. Its first ability available to him is Stasis. With Stasis, the Volus Adept will stop enemies in their tracks with a powerful Mass Effect field. Enemies who are caught in the Stasis field will be unable to move or attack you, giving you a small amount of crowd control by potentially stopping high threat targets such as Phantoms. Unfortunately though, the effects of stasis will wear off after a certain amount of time or if the target takes too much damage. Another downside to stasis is that it also cannot affect armoured targets whatsoever. So any enemy who has a yellow health bar won't be affected by stasis and it will be a waste of an ability. Now stasis can also be used to set up biotic explosions. Basically if you cast stasis on an opponent and then they are hit by a secondary biotic ability for the Volus Adept, you can follow this up with a Biotic Orb if you so wish, then a Biotic Explosion will be created. The effect of the Biotic Explosion is that the target who was set up for the Biotic Explosion, when it's activated, that target will take additional damage, plus anyone else around them will take damage too. Finishing on a good point though, Stasis is an insta-cast ability, so as soon as you see someone who can be affected with Stasis and cast the ability, then they will be affected by the ability. There's no orb that has to float towards the enemy first. The second move and ability available to the Volus Adept is Biotic Orbs. This is a unique ability only available to the Volus race. Basically the Volus Adept will summon three Biotic Orbs that will float around him until fired off. So basically when you use the ability, he will first summon the orbs, they'll float around him, and then when you press the ability a second time, well up to three times, he will fire off the orbs. Once you've fired off all orbs, 
press the ability again to resummon them. The orbs themselves don't actually do that much damage, but they can occasionally stagger enemies, and they got an added bonus, as in they don't actually cost a cooldown timer until you actually have to resummon all three of the orbs, four if you put points into orb count. Now the best thing about the biotic orbs with the build I'm using here, the supporting role, is that with each orb that is active, it basically increases your recharge speed by 10% per orb. So that's basically an extra 40% recharge timer on your abilities when all four orbs are activated. This comes in really handy when you're spamming shield boost. But you have to be wary. I mean, you will get tempted to fire off your biotic orbs to either set off biotic explosions or just for an alternative to your weapon, say if you run out of ammo. So be wary when you actually do decide to fire off an orb as you will feel the cooldown timer on your shield boost without the orbs up especially if you're using heavier weaponry. Now the third and final ability is Shield Boost and this is the most useful ability to the Volus Adept in my opinion. Basically with Shield Boost the Volus Adept will repair his shields and allies who are nearby providing an initial large shield boost to their shields and restoring shields every second for three seconds afterwards. It's basically a heal. Although it doesn't actually affect players health it will affect their shields this is the closest thing you've got to a healer in the game this ability is very very useful to the volus class as they have low survivability but thanks to shield boost it actually provides them the much needed survivability that they lack Shield boost can also be quite effective in various situations, for example during specific missions such as escorts and hacks where you and your teammates are quite close together. Spamming shield boost here really does help and it means that you and your team can potentially sustain a lot of fire. Shield boost can also become useful in other situations like for example when a teammate has gone down and he's been revived and is getting back on his feet, using shield boost on him will give him that opportunity to get back in the game a lot quicker. An interesting fact about shield boost is that it gives you a brief second or two of invulnerability. This can be incredibly useful in many situations. And if you've got a Volus Adept with four biotic orbs up, 200% weapon weight cooldown timer, basically anything to reduce his cooldown timer, it can be almost impossible to down him when he's spamming shield boost. So if you do have a Volus Adept who is spamming shield boost in your team, try to stay close to him as it will help you as well. There's also been reports that shield boost can also prevent enemies from insta-killing your teammates, but I've yet to see this really happen. The only downside about shield boost is that it can be a little bit boring for some players because it's not very offensive based and you're not going to be attacking enemies as much as you are with other classes. Now as for the passive abilities these are down to personal preference. Like I said at the start of the video when I was explaining my spec in Volus training I went for increasing the effectiveness of my shield boost and meaning that shield boost is even more better and I went for damage and capacity to help reduce my weapon weight more than anything. And lastly with fitness like I said at the start of the video again, I went for increasing my health and shields to give me that little bit of extra survivability. Also on top of that, the Volus melee is more defensive based. You're not going to be, shall we say, hurting many enemies with the Volus's melee. So you might as well put the points into health and shields. With the weaponry, go with something you like and that you feel comfortable with. Your weapon will be your main source of damage to be honest. Although you can still dish out damage with the biotic orbs, you really want to focus on dealing damage with your weaponry. You don't necessarily have to go for a 200% cooldown timer, but you also don't want to overweigh yourself too much. Now the Volus as a race are very unique. They're the smallest race and actually can't take cover at all whatsoever because they're so small. But because of that, they can easily just walk up to walls and be in cover out of harm's way. Unfortunately, they also have the lowest health and shields in the game. They are very, very squishy and easy to take down. They cannot take a lot of enemy fire at all. But on the good side though, they have a nice combat role as their dodge mechanic that helps them avoid enemy fire quite easily. They also have a nice set of melee moves that are really defensive based. They actually don't really hurt the enemy at all. The Volus Adept's heavy melee is a move called defensive stance where the Volus will become stationary and will generate this protective shield sphere around him. This damages slightly enemies who are nearby but it also regenerates the Volus Adept's shields. But the best melee move for the Volus Adept is his light melee. This allows him to become cloaked, similar to tactical cloak allowing him to break the line of sight of enemies and get to cover. This is very handy in tight situations. Also, unlike Tactical Cloak, the Volus Adept can still shoot whilst he's cloaked, but unfortunately this only lasts for 3 seconds, so you don't have much time to shoot, and this move will probably be better used to get away 
from bad situations rather than relying on it to get sneak attacks. Overall, in my opinion, the Volus Adept can be a great supporting class. He can be played offensively too, but I feel he shines better when supporting the team with shield boost. Of course, this won't suit everyone's playstyle, and more offensive players will probably hate this build. But with the Volus Adept spec this way and playing a supporting role means that you can tackle the harder difficulties with ease as long as your team remains in unison and close together. If you get into a team that likes to split up and fight on their own then the Volus Adept is not going to shine at all. Also if you're playing this way remember that you're not going to be top of the leaderboard necessarily because there are other classes out there that can dish out damage far easier than the Volus Adept. But with a Volus Adept in your team, you'll have a much easier time tackling the harder difficulties. Anyway, I've been Darblade bringing you my Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide to the Volus Adept. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.